Hi, everyone. My name is Patrick. I work on the support team at the Open Food Network platform. So if you're contacting the support email, it will be probably even me or my colleague Bethan as well. Unfortunately, Bethan was meant to be with us today, but she's not feeling very well. Um, so I'm, it's just me today pulling this one off. Um, so I wanted it to be quite a kind of informal session. So at any point, if there are things that you need clarity on around how the platform works um, or you have questions or things you'd like me to talk about about the platform, do feel free to jump in at any point. Um, I'm, I've decided to avoid doing any slides or anything for this presentation because it's probably much easier to just to show you things on the actual platform itself. Um, and I'm going to talk about a couple of different models that some of the food hubs that we already work with are using. And I'm also going to talk about the future plans because we have some new features for the software that are being developed at the moment. And I can show you some of the preliminary designs of what's been happening towards making um, ease of uh, creating systems for food equity much easier on the platform. Um, so just as a start off, does anyone, uh, just to get an idea of how people interact with the Open Food Network platform, if you want to unmute and just mention maybe if you even use the platform, if you're planning on using the platform, uh, and how you use it at the moment. So if anyone wants to unmute and start, that'd be great. It would just give me a good idea of the kind of understanding of where people are at. Hi, um, I'm Julie and I run Feeding Gainsborough um, and this is all new to me, the Open Food Network is all new to me, but I was tagged in um, and I thought, I'll, and especially around the food, um, I thought I'd um, come along and see what it's all about. So I have no knowledge at the minute. Okay, perfect. I'll jump in after Julie and good to see you, Julie. Um, Rose here from Feeding Britain. Um, so very similar, recently heard about and have been speaking to a number of people from the Open Food Network. Um, so Feeding Britain is a network organ a network charity working to tackle hunger across the country. Um, and feels like there are overlaps and interlinkingness here. Um, so yeah, just interested to find out more about the Open Food Network as a platform and how we can work together. Great, thank you. Uh, anyone else like to add in? Oh, um, Lauren introduced herself in the chat. Uh, okay, so I haven't got it because I've got my screen set up differently. So nice to meet you. Um, she says she's new to the OFN as well. Uh, I'm a community food development worker based in Fife, Scotland, and was keen to find out a bit more. Um, I'm Laura. I'm keeping my camera off. I'm sorry because I'm not very well today, but I can't help myself. I really wanted to join this session. Um, I'm, I work for the Linkage Food Partnership and we're um, working on setting up open food network um, networks and hubs across the county. So it's super exciting to see you here, Julie. I don't think we've met each other, but hopefully we will. Not yet. <laughs> awesome. It's good to see the network growing every time. Um, okay, if anyone else wants to add, you're welcome to. Um, so, and if not, I can kind of make a start. So, because, no, okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by talking a bit about, uh, because this is quite focused into food equity, uh, I'm going to talk a bit about what's what, uh, particularly one of the hubs that we have, how they're using the platform um, at the moment. So, one of our hubs, our main hub, uh, who are the biggest one that use our platform is called Tamar Valley Food Hubs. And they have essentially like a buy it forward veg box scheme. Um, and they've set it up in a way that customers can buy veg bags or veg boxes for other people in need. And then these veg back boxes or bags are then delivered to a variety of different um, organizations around their local area who then um, distribute them to the people so they have they distribute to the Salvation Army homeless shelter uh, they also distribute to a local Baptist church which makes meals for people as well a community hub in a particularly deprived area in Plymouth and individuals referred from local food banks as well 
And then they also do seasonal do donations towards uh, vulnerable school kids as well around Christmas time. So this is a really nice way that they can do that. And essentially they set these things up as a product on their shop front so that their customers can just buy or contribute towards this additional bag uh, that goes out. Uh, in terms of how that works for Tamar themselves, they they essentially keep a spreadsheet with all of this information happening on a week by week basis when their order cycle is finished. So um, they will tally up how many veg bags have been brought by their customers and then distribute them, I think, in a kind of uh, rotational manner between these different entities, depending on how many they feel that each one needs to go to which is a really nice way of doing it. And it's quite straightforward then. It doesn't really uh, involve too many complications in terms of the platform. Um, would people like me to show how you actually get it set up on the platform as a user, as a starter? Because I know there's some people here who probably never actually used the platform before. So I think maybe that might be a good place to start. And then we can start talking about some of more of the intricacies about what you can actually do with the platform. Perfect, I'll do that then. Um, so when you join the, well, when you load the Open Food Network platform, obviously the Open Food Network platform is a global piece of software, but we, and we have instances in different countries. So to access the UK one, we'd be going to openfoodnetwork.org.uk for all the UK juices. And to start with, you, well, there's two options. You can either come up here to sign in, to sign up, or you can go down to the bottom of the page down here to click register here. And this is if you're interested in selling on the Open Food Network platform. So this is to put your produce onto the page rather than just being a customer. You can create a customer account through the sign up up there. And when we get this um, screen here, you can then sign up. Uh, and it's really strict. It's a very generic kind of sign up form. You put your email address in, choose a password and confirm the password, sign up. And then you get sent a verification email to your email, which you then need to click the link to verify that you're, that is who you are and that you're linked to that email address. And then from that point on, you can then use the sign in option here on the main form, or you can sign in up here as well. So obviously I have my details already saved in here and you can just click the sign in. You see, so you're creating a new food hub. Um, and you just follow through the instructions through that form to get yourself set up into a hub. Once you're into the actual thing, this you can then click. Oh, I jumped ahead of myself there. Um, up here, you've got this little man icon, which is your kind of user account on the thing. And then you can click uh, account settings here, which is the screen we're on here, which will just tell you. So this is if you're actually using the OFN as a customer, but you can obviously have a seller's account and still be a customer and sell and buy through the Open Food Network platform as well. So if you were buying stuff, you, this this account setting here is those details. So it'd be your order number, any credit cards that you have linked to the account, which are saved into it, and any transactions that have happened as well. And also you can change your password as well in the account settings page or any orders that you've taken. So that's the for the customer end of it. And then for the actual selling end of it, we have an administration panel here. Uh, I'm an admin on quite a few different shops here on this page. But for you, if you've set up one particular shop from on the previous setup page, you would only have one. Um, and I have... I can spell my name right. Um, I have some test shops here that I use for testing things out on the platform. These are essentially like uh, dummy shops or dummy. I'm a dummy producer in a dummy hub as well on the platform. And then we can go into the settings for each of these um, and we can set the things up. So you can give your, this is your shop name. There's some important bits here as well. So does everyone know the difference between a hub and a producer? in terms of how the OFN works. So a uh, producer is what's well, in the name. You produce product that could be vegetables, it could be dairy, could be anything at all. Um, 
And then you can sell that to a food hub who can then distribute that on your behalf, or you can sell your bulk vegetables towards someone else's veg bags, for example, who can then distribute it as mixed veg bags, or you can be a hub and then you can just buy bulk food in or vegetables from other producers, or you can be a producer hub which essentially means that you you produce some food yourself that you sell directly to the customer, but you also buy in bulk food from other producers as well to make more food available on your shop. Um, if, uh, if you want to sell any produce at all through your hub, you need to make sure that your primary producer button here is clicked. Otherwise, you won't be able to add products to your page. It will just treat you like a hub that doesn't have your own products. So particularly if you wanted to, even if you were a hub who wanted to do a pay it forward scheme, for example, where you wanted to be allow people to be able to buy credit for other pe more vulnerable people who want to use your platform, that would still be classed as a product because it's the voucher itself that you would need. So you would need to make sure that this producer button here is clicked. You can also uh, change the visibility of whether your actual shop is visible publicly, hidden or uh, hide all references. So public means that it will show up on the map and it will be searchable on the Open Food Network platform. Hidden means that it's still a, a site that people can access, but you won't be on the map. And the only way they would find you is if you, you give that people the direct URL the web address to your shop and then hide all preferences just completely hides you completely and you won't your shop won't be visible to anyone on the platform at all um and then really there's just some basic setting up when you first set your shop up shop up uh with kind of contact information i started changing stuff on that as well uh contact information you can link to your social media as well. So there's buttons on the contact page that have links to that for your shop from. Uh, you can open my shop tab, gives you a bit about us. So you can write a small description about who you are and what you're about. Um, and business details as well, which is important stuff that you would need to get in for the making sure that it's all legal from a kind of tax perspective. So making sure if you're a registered company and company's house, having your company number or charity number, if you're a charity and whether you charge VAT and stuff, which then sets the platform up to give you the right uh, invoicing and also means that you have uh, the tax reports and things available to you through the report section. But really the most two important ones really that you need to set up in that respect uh, for selling through the open food Network platform are sh uh, shipping methods, which you can have multiple different methods. So this might be collection points uh, where you can drop off. Um, it might be actual delivery options as well. So people who pay for it to be couriered to their house rather than going to collect it from a pickup point, or it might be yeah fr uh, free home delivery options for certain people. There's lots you can do with the platform. And I'm going to not try to go into too much detail because there is an awful lot. And if you want to know a lot more about how what are the things you can do with the platform, the user guide, the open food guide.openfoodnetwork.org has everything written out with step-by-step -step guides on how you can do all the different bits of functionality that the platform can do. Um, and then we have payment methods as well, which we can offer all sorts of stuff, banks, bank, uh, cash, um, bank transfer. We are integrated with Stripe and PayPal as well. Uh, on that note, I would recommend not using PayPal because it's the most expensive method and you will end up paying much more in charges than you will through Stripe. So we generally try to recommend people that they use Stripe for, other, uh, for card payments and not uh, free PayPal. But some people like to offer it as an option and it just means that the customer will end up paying a bit more, but sometimes that works for some people. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do now, I think would be a good thing would be for me to just show you how to set up a product as well on the shop front. So once we, this would be the initial stuff that we do when we initially set the shop up. And for that, we go to this big products tag. Uh, 
tab at the top here. And again, these are all products that are in hubs that I'm kind of admining in the background with or working to help set their shops up. So these are ones that are already there. But if you look up in this top right corner here, we have a add a new product. Sorry. Oh, my um so we add a new product at the top here uh the supplier will be the producer so that would be me in this case uh so remember i had two uh shop fronts that i've created i've got a producer and i'm also a hub as well for the test purposes so that was just my producer and in this case, we will be producing, I don't know. Yeah, let's do a gift voucher because this is one of the things I wanted to show with how you can set up vouchers as well. We then have a unit size as well. So there's lots of different options, but obviously if we're dealing with a gift voucher, it's not going to be kilograms or liters. So it'll be an item instead. And the item is one item and it's a voucher. And then we can um, select a product category. This is quite important to get this right because this will define on this when people are searching for products through the platform. This is how uh, the software kind of um, categorizes all the different products into the right orders. So for us, this would be spe probably special offers for this because it's not really, or maybe products, but I would probably put this under special offers. And then the price. So in this case, we're going to take create a gift gift voucher for ten pounds. Uh, but we can add more variants to this product. But we just create one to start with. So this would be a ten pound voucher. We don't have any tax on it. It's not going to be shipped because it's a virtual product. And almost certainly, this would be unlimited. And then we can write a product description um, about the product as well. And in fact, I'm just going to take a moment to um, share the guide to this in the chat so that everyone's got a copy. So this there's a link to the, the user guide about vouchers um, and how they work. Um, at the moment with vouchers, we are, it's not the easiest and most user-friendly way to create pay it forward vouchers on the platform. So later on in this talk, I'm going to talk um, about some of the, show you a couple of the videos of the design work that we're doing to implement new features, which will allow for really user-friendly, both for the back end and the front end for uh, vouchers to be used on the platform. Uh, but currently we, we have a kind of workaround way that you can create vouchers that people can buy for Christmas, or it could be used for a pay it forward voucher as well, which I'm, I'm covering, going to cover kind of as part of this. Um, so in your product description, we would add, um, yeah, what this is about. So if this was a gift voucher, just be like 10 pound gift voucher towards your next shop with your, whichever hub it happened to be. Um, that can be emailed on to someone else, could be given as a Christmas present, or this could be a pay it forward voucher. So like you've been gifted through the local uh, Lincolnshire community, uh, 20 pounds towards your next shop uh, to help you have, gain access to uh, food in your local area. I don't know, uh, but we would have to put uh, quite a bit more descriptions into this. And Louise, who used to work for the Open Food Network, has done a fantastic guide here. Uh, talking about all of this um, when we're creating the projects um, there's some quite important stuff we need to add as well so talking about um, expiry codes um, expiry dates and making sure that you're factoring in the enterprise fees as well if they're part of them um, do if anyone doesn't have any questions or needs clarifying while I'm going through this do just unmute and ask because I said, yeah, it'd be easier to do it as it's happening. Um, and then you can email the voucher to the different people as well. So in this case, you can create your own voucher artwork to go with it if you wanted to, or in the case of um, pay it forward vouchers, maybe this wouldn't be necessary, but they would need the information as well. Um, so 
if we go back to our product. So in this case, we're just going to stick with a gift voucher. Um, for 10 pounds and they're in stock. And then we can click the create button to create the product. Oh, I forgot to mention that you can add an image as well, which is usually quite useful on the platform because it helps to for people to identify what it is on the platform. So maybe we can you can make up a small image for the voucher as well to go up here. But you don't have to have an image, but it's a really good thing to do. And then we can create our product. Cool. So your gift voucher has been success, successfully created. And now in our product search, so all the products that you've ever created will be in this list essentially below. Or if you're linked to multiple hubs, all the products for those hubs will be found in this list. So if we look, find our gift voucher now up here. And you can search here. It should be enough just to find it. Yeah, there we go. So Tamer also have a gift voucher as well. Here's their product here. And this is the one that we just created together. So we also had then here, we can clone uh, to make a direct copy of everything to the speed of making more products, which is really useful if you've got lots of quite similar products and then you can just add, slightly edit them if you need to. And we can also edit and create variants for this product. So this is the information that we've just installed here. Um, and we can go to the variants um, tab here. And then again, generally, if you need to create any new thing on a page, it's always on the top right hand corner in a blue button if you're looking for something on the platform. So we can create a new variant here. And then instead, we can also create a £20 voucher as well, which is also unlimited in stock. As you see now, we have a 10 and a £20 voucher, and maybe we might want to add a £50 voucher as well. Great. So we have these dip, all these three different products now that we could essentially go and find on our front end in my um, test shop. And these would be available for customers to be able to buy. So this is where it can get quite complicated and this um, not particularly user friendly for both the person receiving the voucher and also for the hub manager as well, because our system is not currently designed to really be able to do this functionality, but it is possible, um, which is why I really like the Tamar method where they're essentially just, they they don't really try to allocate funds to people on the platform, which is what we're, I'm going to show you how to do in a minute from these vouchers. They essentially just have a pay it forward scheme. People contribute and buy a box for somebody and then they just recognize that on a weekly basis, clock it in a spreadsheet and then um, put it out to their local networks and distribute those bags accordingly. Yes, Andrew, did you have a question? Yeah, just I'm an accountant. So I'm just, the, the vouchers is plus 20%. What is the 20% then? Is it an admin fee? It's not VAT, is it obviously? Uh, no, it's an enterprise fee. So it's just, it's the extra that they, with Tamar, they've, or with the hub shop, they've, um, they've said that all of their products have a set enterprise fee on the product, regardless, which is just for their administration for doing it. And that is on all, every product in their shop, regardless of what it is. So right. they've, they've set that up themselves, essentially. Okay. The right. So the net of 10, 20, 50 is just basically going to be a payment coming in at a later date. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And whatever so, products, and there won't be many, some will be vatable, obviously. And I'm sure yeah. you'll come you'll come to that, won't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's all. Thank you. No problem. Um, so yeah, these products are then put into um the system and people can buy these vouchers. Um, and we do need to create some kind of probably if we're doing this as a gift voucher, for example, it would be this kind of setup where you can create a nice little thing that you can either email and or send um, in the post and print off or give to people with their veg boxes when they order them so that they can then hand them on. And at this point, you really want to make sure that you keep really good records of what's being sold. And again, there is no real functionality on the platform to be able to do this. This would have to be your you as a hub manager managing this in a separate spreadsheet somewhere. 
as I said, it's not the best system that we have at the moment, but this is a workaround that we can set up um, to make this kind of functionality possible. So you've uh, you've got the email of the person who's brought the voucher, the value of the voucher. Uh, that's the product, um, sorry, the order number and the date they purchased it. And then you create a voucher ID number as well for that voucher so you can recognize what it is. And then they can then send it on with quite clear instructions um, about uh, what they need to do. So when the customer, so the person who's the giftee who receives the gift voucher, they need to then contact you as the hub um, that to sit to redeem the voucher. And we need to set them up on the platform as a customer, or if they're already a customer, then we can allocate the um, voucher to them. Yes. Andrew. Yeah. The voucher ID number, will that change automatically? You won't have to do it manually, will you? No, it's manual. This is it. It's literally like right. this, this, this functionality doesn't really exist on the platform, but this is a workaround yeah. that we've created so that it makes it possible. But it, as you will see as we go through this process, quite convoluted and not particularly like user friendly, but it works. Yeah. Um, that's okay. But uh, as at the end of this presentation, I will show you that we have really big plans, which are already funded to build this voucher functionality and pay it forward system into the platform, uh, which should be hopefully launched later this year. Um, so this is kind of as it stands at the moment. Um, so yeah, we have the ID number and then we need to essentially add that customer to our customer list. So the customer list is already here. So if you look here, we can look up our customers. All of our customers who've ever ordered for us will appear in this list when I select a shop. Uh, let's do Cadwin. And I think I set myself up earlier in here. Yeah. So we set them up as a customer. If they don't, if they've never ordered through the Open Food Network before and they have a voucher, you would need to add them as a customer here with the new customer button um, and put them in to your shop. And then we want to create a tag for them. Now, a tag is a way of grouping different people together. So Cadwin, I know, for example, they have staff members who um, get 15% off everything for working. for. So they don't get paid, but they're volunteers, but they get 15% off everything in the shop that they can shop for. So they have a tag for staff, as you can see here. And then you can create separate... Um, essentially pricing structures for different tagged groups. So you can essentially create one that takes 15% off of all products for people who have a particular tag on their customer name. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, I know it's not the <laughs> easiest of options, but then so we need to create a unique tag essentially for this um, uh, voucher so we usually we probably use the, the like voucher id um number maybe with a prefix or a postfix just so we can identify which one of the vouchers it was uh, but in this case i'm gonna, just going to call it test voucher with a dash so that's been tagged now And save. Oh, yeah, sorry. My chat thing's in the way. It's down here, isn't it, on this one? All changes successfully saved. Um, cool. So we've done that. And now... Um, Remembering the next bit on the process. Uh, yes, we need to add a payment method to account for that voucher. So for that, we go to our enterprise settings. Enterprises, and I'll do this in my shop so I don't mess up someone's active shop. Um, Patrick's Hub. And then payment methods. And then we can create a new payment method. here and we know and this was a test voucher 
and then we give the description of the voucher, make sure it's active, and then we need to put the tag that we put from the previous one into here so that it links the two together and it's on cash and it will be for a flat rate for the order. Okay, so let me do it without, no, okay, you've got to select the hub. So I've got a few in my hub. There we go. You wouldn't probably have this window down the side if you only manage one hub. It would just be your one would automatically be selected here. And then the calculator, obviously, it's a flat rate per order. And the amount. So the vouch in the amount window here, we will add in the amount that the voucher was for. So say I brought a 20, I had a 20 pound voucher, I would be putting in uh, minus 20. So it's going to be a payment method that someone can click that will take 20 pounds off of the order. Does that clear to everyone? And then we update. Cool. So that's in there now. And now there's one, there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to make tag rules because otherwise basically that, that payment method will be open available to everyone who shops at your shop at the moment. So we need to define the tag rules for that particular tagged uh, voucher. So if I go to uh, my hub again here and in the settings for my hub, we have a uh, tab here called tag rules. So by default, we want to show hide payment methods at checkout and add a rule. And the, the voucher was test hyphen um the test voucher is not visible by default on the shop front and then we add a new tag rule saying that tag customers tagged with test voucher have a payment method with test voucher visible Is that clear? So do you have to do that every time? Yeah. Right. It's a nightmare. Um, it's not, as I said, it's a real workaround system at the moment, um, but I'm really pleased to say that this probably won't be the system for too much longer. Only within a couple of months, hopefully, we will be launching the next bit of the um, software in a big update that's coming. Um, so that's how it works. And that would mean that the customer then has 20 pounds of credit essentially available on the platform. The other issue with this is that you need to also manage it and keep an eye on it. So when that customer does then use that 20 pounds, you need to then go in and delete the voucher option. Otherwise every time that 20 pounds. So it's a system based on honesty and knowing your customers and explain if someone did try to do that you could also always cancel the order or contact them and be like yeah you've double spent on a voucher and you're basically trying to rob 20 pounds off of us so you know most of our customers who use our platform are fairly like they're doing it for the right reasons and this has never happened before but as you can see it's not the most uh intuitive system for creating a voucher setup but it is possible um, and for that reason, I think if you were using these kind of systems for particularly for like a pay it forward system, I think the Tamar model is much easier. Um, and also it means that you don't really it's it takes the need out of trying to decide who gets the credit, who doesn't, what criteria do you have for it? Whereas where they've essentially been like, well, we have these organizations that we work with, be it the Salvation Army and local food banks and things like that and we people buy a veg box and we just rotate it between these different organizations and allow them to distribute that food they might i don't know what happens with the veg bags it might be they get split apart and just added into the gen general food within each of the food you know in the food bank for example um so yeah there's lots of different options about ways that we you could use the ofn uh for this option um but yeah with the new stuff that's coming through the software so we have a whole new 
voucher system that's being built. We are working to get healthy start vouchers properly integrated into the platform as well. We're building a customer credit system as well. So people can add, be add, have customer credit added to their account without the need for all of this palaver, essentially. Um, so I thought I might actually just, unless there are some questions and anyone wants to ask about the stuff I've just shown you through this stuff, I can show you some of the designs. I've got some little design videos of what it's going to look like and how it's going to work as well, which is about five minutes, which we can watch. But yeah, if there was any questions, do feel free to jump in. Can everyone see that window now? Yes. Yeah. And now, and I'll play it. Looks very blurred, but go on. Yeah, it's. I think it's the video, so yeah. she's just kind okay. of talking. Okay, so um, this is for the LMCF project, uh, adding in voucher functionality. So um, the functionality for the front end sits on the payment method page. At the top, you have the form field, enter voucher code, add a button, apply. Um, we chose to put it on this page because it fits with um, payment methods um, and doesn't quite fit on the details page. There's just a lot of information on there. Also, once somebody enters a voucher code, it may or it may always, that's up to you, remove the button cash at pickup as there's just complexity with people adding in vouchers and having money left over to pay, which just might lead to some situations where businesses have people buying things and not completing payment with cash. So if something, if a voucher code is entered, this various, that this is to be determined, various payment methods, at least cash at pickup will be hidden from uh, the user. Then you click next order summary and oh sorry um this is the state that it looks like once it's been added and this is an example of if it's a hundred percent if the amount is a hundred percent then all of the payment options will be hidden there are there is no need to show those options or for the customer to import their data so then they click next order summary and the customer can see that the discount or the voucher has been applied on the right hand side and how much is left over, if any. In this case, there is none left to pay. Uh, the voucher code name is present as well as how much it was for and also in the payment method, you could see the voucher method here. You can also remove the code uh, and go back to go back to this page. Once the remove code link is clicked it can either redirect the user to this page which i think is probably the only option uh, otherwise yeah i think that's the best option we could show something underneath but i think it's best once the link is clicked it just redirects the user back to in, into their payment information because they may have to now pay something um, and that's it for the front end. For mobile, it's the same. So you just enter your voucher code. You can see the voucher code and then you can see it on the checkout as, as well as how much it's applied. In the back office, we have quite a few tasks, I guess we want, or um, needs, user needs that we want to hit. So these are all of the needs that we want to hit in the future and as well as now. And I've designed for all of them in this design and we'll just take away the things that we don't have the funding to build. This is the new navigation I've been working with. So I've been building it because I want to make sure that in the future when this is built, it actually works with the new navigation. I see it as this will probably be built right now with the current navigation and it should work with that, uh, I haven't actually designed it with that yet though. So you can see the vouchers has been added as a new tab under enterprises and then enterprise settings. So there's a vouchers tab here. 
if you click the vouchers tab, it'll open up uh, the screen where you can choose to add a new voucher if you click that button and you can see all of the vouchers that you've got currently in your system uh, that have been used and those that haven't been used. You can search. This is using the existing design that we already have for the back office for the products page. Uh, so you can search, if you search by food equity or promotional, ideally it would be able to help you filter these rather than add a new filter in here for food equity versus promotional. Otherwise you could search for a voucher code or a label potentially. All dates, so uh, these are the dates that you're basically filtering the below information for. The label, so labeling is a way of tracking your voucher codes. You can give your voucher codes different labels just similar to tagging. We just don't call it tagging because that already exists in the system. So you can... Cool. And there is another like follow on video that kind of covers a bit more of the back end stuff. So you can see it, but you, as you can probably see, it's going to be a much, much better system than we're currently working with, which actually functions as a voucher system. Um, and yeah, you're really welcome to kind of be involved in this process. I mean, this is the great thing about open source uh, software is that this is community built, essentially, like we've reached out to our community and been and asked what they need in terms of functionality and Tamar who are one of our main hubs have been helping us with this and they helped to get some of the funding to actually make this software happen because they realized there was they needed it for their functionality for their shop front um and found the funding for us to do it and we work as a big community together to try to make this software as useful as it possibly can be towards the you know, the sustainable food movement as a whole. So if there are any other functionality or things that you really feel that you need for your hub, do get in touch with us because it's really important information for us to make, push the software into whatever direction we feel that it needs to. Uh, Laura, so you're asking, so are OFN food hubs currently interacting with local food banks? Yeah, so Tamar, they essentially ha yeah, have this pay it forward system. People can buy a veg box, veg bag, and then they get delivered to local food hubs or local food hubs also refer people to Tamar who can then receive the bag as well, I think is one of the systems that they're working with. I'd need to ask to find out a bit more information. Um, does anyone have any questions or things they'd like to ask or things they want explaining on the platform? Um, just a quick one, Patrick. Um, do you get a sense that people are coming to the Open Food Network who are at risk of hunger or, or struggling for food and looking for food support through the network? Um, I, I, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, I'm sure it does happen and it will be really kind of unique to each of the hubs because... Essentially, we we don't really interact in that kind of hub to customer relationship end of the spectrum. You've got to think of the we we provide a software platform that lots of other enterprises and businesses utilize to be able to pay for and display the products that they have available. So that will really be on a hub by hub or producer by producer basis. Um, we know that there are these things going on on the platform, which is great, and we try to make the software as useful as we can to make to facilitate that happening um but in terms of people coming to the actual open food network platform looking for help with this stuff i really don't know um how much of that's going on but i'm sure there are but thank you no problem um, but it's definitely something we're really like engaged with as a topic um as a software platform anyway that we want to find ways that we can help to um make affordable um healthy like fresh local food available to as many people as possible and to make it as um accessible as possible as well did anyone else have anything they wanted to ask Hi, Patrick, it's Julie. 
Um, I, I, I've got the the website open on my other screen here, so I've just had a look through, um, and you have the solidarity supporter form on here. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, um, so I pick up um, back of store surplus foods, and we aren't allowed to sell those products. We can repay, but we can't sell them. Um, could we, on your network, set up um, a supportive form for our organization, um, which would, I think, for supporters would be better than something like a crowdfunder, for example. Would we be able to do that? So, sorry, I, you broke up a little bit. There. I didn't quite catch what it was that you were asking on the platform. So, so you, you have a solidarity supporter scheme for the yeah. overall scheme. Would we be able to do that as an individual organization? somebody wanted to support our organization they could do through here yeah i mean you could probably set it up as a product um and have it on the shop front as like a solidarity like support us as a you know not-for-profit uh enterprise trying to yeah provide okay. food to our local area you can as long as in terms of the platform as long as it's related to it doesn't have to be food even though we're called the open food network platform and we do have a kind of ethical criteria we're not going to allow people to start selling you know we're not particularly keen on people selling like mars bars and stuff like that for our platform and obviously most of the people who use our platform understand that and they're using it for that same reason as well that we don't really support that kind of stuff but we do um yeah anything that's related to the promotion of sustainably produced but agroecologically farmed food then we are happy for that to be sold through the platform as a whole okay thank you anyone else great um jenna should i pass back over to you if you wanted to we'll chat about anything Thank you, Patrick. No problem. Um, okay, well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, so Patrick was just telling about the new updates that will be coming in, in the next few months. So if you want to know when that's happening, I think the, a good way is to sign up to our newsletter. And we also have a bi-weekly bulletin where we also share like weekly, bi-weekly up software updates. Um, so here's the link in the chat if you want to sign up. Um, and also we have a uh, feedback form, which only takes like five minutes and is very useful for us to know um, how we're getting on with our events and if there's anything we should change or anything that you'd like and we can keep doing. Um, and I'll also pop this into the chat. And I think that's pretty much, pretty much it uh, from us. And um, yeah, if you have any question, you can always email us. And yeah, thank you for coming. Do you have anything to add, Pat? Uh, no, thank you for coming. And um, yeah, thank you for listening. Um, and yeah, if you do have any support or questions around how to use the platform as well, do contact us, contact us on the support at openfoodnetwork.org.uk email. Uh, which is the same one through the about site as well um and if we can yeah we'll try to support you in every way to get set up on the platform as we go through